In his small book, Lament for a Son, Nicholas Wolterstorff wrote about the confusion and frustration caused when pious folks informed him that his grief was borderline sinful because God had taken his son. Other well-meaning people told him that God was pained by the loss, but had no responsibility for it. Wolterstorff wrote in response, I cannot fit it all together by saying, God did it, but neither can I do so by saying, there was nothing he could do about it. I cannot fit it together at all. I can only, with Job, endure. I do not know why God did not prevent Eric's death. To live without the answer is precarious. It's hard to keep one's footing. I have no explanations. I can do nothing else than endure in the face of this deepest and most painful of mysteries. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and resurrector of Jesus Christ. Death is an experience that many people don't know how to approach, even if they're the one waiting through the loss of a loved one, particularly a child, especially a yet unborn baby. The Bible talks frequently about men and women who struggled with deeply personal issues. Couples like Sarah and Abraham had to wrestle with the question of barrenness. David grieved for his dying infant son and mourned the death of his adult son in front of an entire nation. Hannah grieved over her infertility in the temple before God and the head priest. If there is an oppressive silence here, it ought to be broken. This word by definition, grief, is deep sorrow, sadness caused by an extreme distress. And the Bible says, and God mourned and he pained. The grief of their hearts overwhelmed our Father. You see, God's heart answers to honest grief. The, the cry of a heart that is, is so, so burdened down, so overburdened by grief. I can't give answers anymore to many, many things, but I do know this. The Holy Spirit is trying to reach you in a very unique and special way. And if you're in grief of some kind, God will respond to your grief. You may not have faith even, but he'll take your grief. You, he'll respond to your grief. You, that, that grieving heart, that hurt, and that pain, bring it to Jesus. You can step out of that place right now because the Holy Spirit wants to minister Christ to your need. He wants to minister to your pain and to the grief that is in you. After her miscarriage, Abby Wedgworth wrote about the grieving process that she and her husband went through afterward. We have a lot of questions, she openly admitted. What caused the baby to die? Could we have prevented its death? Why surprise us, make us excited, and then shock us with loss? Did God receive our baby? Will its resurrected body be a fetus? Will we be able to conceive again when we want to? But those questions only lead to anxiety, dead ends, and frustrations. Instead, we will cling to what we do know, to what God has revealed. As Moses put it, the secret things belong to God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. Deuteronomy 29.29 29. So we labor to entrust the secret things to a sovereign and good Father. God invites us to cross this river of grief with Him, a passage that may not answer our questions, but which promises that the pain is not pointless. Reading Nicholas Wolterstorff's Lament is disquieting because he expresses his grief like a biblical Job with raw emotion and brutal honesty. He does not try to sweep unanswered questions under the rug or tidy up the ugly harshness of loss. He does not try to run from his anguish. He does not turn away from God, but rather faces his Lord squarely without a mask of calm. On the final pages, he stands at his son's grave and wonders about the resurrection. When he will see his boy again, there are no easy answers. There are promises. We are called forward into life, never forgetting, but growing around the wound.